All right, we're back here on Life After the Box, and I am sitting here with my better half, whom I just interviewed about the th oh, the three biggest or a few big worries that people face these days when it comes to their assets, finances, all of the above. And so I'm wondering if you could take a minute again to recap for the listeners who may not have been here for the first segment. Well, um, one of the things I had mentioned, you had asked me about my background, and one of the things I did before I retired from the practice of law was asset protection planning. And I think a lot of the worries today sort of revolve around that. There's a lot of folks that are worried that they didn't protect their money, their assets, and they're going to lose it. They're going to get sued somehow, or somehow the government's going to be involved with their money, or their creditors are after them. Or a second one might be that a court is going to somehow get involved and determine their future or their family's future and their money's going to be spent fighting something in the court system because they're worried that, you know, in America we're really very litigious. Or they're worried that their golden years are really going to kind of turn into lead years. In other words, that it's not really going to be a great time. They're going to need a lot of health care. All their money's going to be spent on health care. They're going to wind up in a subpar nursing home where the care is not very good, infectious diseases are running rampant, things like that. So those are kind of three big worries I think a lot of folks have. Yes, they do. They absolutely do. And I, I remember in, in my many years in corporate and banking and all of that, I heard a lot about these very, very worries that people have and the fears that they're facing. So what can they do? I mean, what are, what are some very, you know, nuts and bolts steps that they can take right now? I mean, what would be the most helpful? Well, let me give you three tips because we only have, you know, a brief time here in this segment that I think will, will help the listeners here. This focuses a lot on the second issue, worried about courts being involved in their future or family's future, but it really... Um, kind of revolves around all of them. And that is issues that we all need to face, and they're really critical in times of stress or times where times perhaps are challenging, is you need to make sure you have someone to step in for you and make medical decisions for you if you're not able to, someone that can step in and make financial decisions for you if you're not able to, and if you're like many of us, you run your own business or you, you're a gig worker and, and operate really as a small entrepreneur that way, you need someone to step in and manage that part of your life too if you become incompetent. Now, why am I worried so much about incompetency? Because in any given year, I mean, it's 100% guaranteed we're all going to die, right? But in any given so far. year as an adult the chances of you becoming incompetent are greater than you dying. And a lot of us will become incompetent at some point in our lives. Sometimes it's late in life where it's unfortunately permanent, but sometimes it's a temporary situation. You, know, you see people on ventilators now that are put into like mild comas because they're suffering from COVID and they're not going to wake up for 45 or 50 days. Who's taking care of their affairs while they're gone? or while they're, they're out, out of commission, so to speak. So one of the tools we have as one of the solutions for this, not the only one, but one of them, are simple to use, and they're called powers of attorney. You've probably heard of those, right? In, in Absolutely. I mean, and, and what you just said lends itself to the fact that estate plans are not only for the for the dead, they're for you while oh, you're still yes. living. Absolutely. This is pe part and parcel of that. Yes, M many people say I don't want to do an estate plan because I'm afraid if I wash the car, it's going to rain. In other words, when I sign my will, that's it. I'm dead. I'm going to die. Except how many times did that happen mm -hmm. where people? No one walked out of my office yeah. and got hit by a car in the parking lot. Never happened. But the issue about incompetency is, is, a, is a big one because you're still here and you may regain competency, but you don't want a court involved in your situation if you can avoid it. And powers of attorney are a good solution for a lot of folks for these issues. On the medical side, there's a medical or healthcare power of attorney. 
Most states have a suggested format. I know Wisconsin does. Wisconsin is actually really nice. There, the government website actually has fillable forms right on it. It does really. Yeah. I didn't. I wasn't aware of that. It does. It does. And and Illinois has a suggested format as well. And I think for those listeners on the stream who aren't in Wisconsin or Illinois, I would suspect that almost all of the states have some sort of suggested medical or healthcare power of attorney. And what this does is it lets you appoint somebody else to make medical decisions for you if you're not able to. So I might appoint you, my spouse, you might appoint me the same, and we might have someone else in our family as a backup because you always should have a backup if your first choice can't act. And that person can not only make medical decisions for you if you're not able to, but they can talk to the doctors. The doctors can release medical information to them, you can get access to records. It can even cover stuff such as if you're hopelessly ill and there's just a bunch of machines keeping you going, do you want that? Do you not want that? So it can cover life-sustaining care. If people have specific religious beliefs around this, you know, like there are certain religious uh, um, sex that don't believe in blood transfusions or certain types of care, you want to have that laid out. Usually a good idea, Not when, when I was practicing, I would suggest people not s stray too far from the suggested format because if you walk into a doctor's office or a hospital, they're going to be very comfortable with that form and they're not going to question it usually, even though you can create your own. So that's for medical. Right. Um, for financial, we have a, a sister document, a financial power of attorney, where again, you can appoint someone with as many backups as you want to to take care of paying your bills, signing your tax returns, um, even negotiating. Uh, if you're involved in a lawsuit, they can, they can step into your shoes and, and handle that for you. So it's a very broad form document that lets someone do that so that no one in your family has to go to court to be appointed your guardian under the supervision of the courts, which is intrusive and ins expensive, to help those matters be handled. Well, and, and there's always, there, I know we don't have enough time to cover it today, but there's a, there's, there are issues around picking an agent as well. You want sure. to select the best one because there, and there are a lot of questions you need to ask Absolutely. that person. Absolutely. It's not, it's, uh, it, you know, the, the person that you select as your agent under healthcare could be different than the one under finances. And often they are. And it, it could even be different than the third situation I mentioned where you may need an additional financial agent to handle your business. And you may say, well, I want my, um, you know, if you're a lady, you may say, I want my husband to handle my, my, finan my personal financial matters if I'm in incompetent, but he doesn't know anything about my business. I'm going to have my business partner handle my business stuff if I become incompetent because that would lead to the smoothest situation. So those three situations are present in many of our lives. At least two of them are present in every adult's life. And nowadays, with the plethora of people being entrepreneurs and gig workers and things like that, the third one is present, I would say, in close to half of adults. Right. Absolutely. So Absolutely. I think those are, are three good tips to make sure you've got the someone to take care of medical decisions for you if you're not able to, financial decisions on the personal end if you're not able, financial decisions for your your. Uh, business if you have one and again this this should help put to rest at least some of those three fears we were talking about and there are many more and many things that that you really do need to do to do to prepare yourself for retirement and and just overall life I mean there prepare yourself for um, adult life you got it yes yeah. absolutely yeah because absolutely. if you be turn 18 your parents can't make decisions for you anymore so, I mean, we see this, I used to see this in my practice, kids would go off to college at 18 and their parents would say, I want them to make a power of attorney for me. So if they get hurt while they're away at school, I can talk to the doctor because my kid's now 19 and I, the doctor otherwise is going to say, this is an adult. I can't say anything. So it, it, it impacts a lot of different lives uh, at people at different stages of life. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, and the, the biggest misnomer that we just talked about is the fact that people think that estate plans are, or 
estate plans are for the dead when they're not they're they're for for the living yeah, as well for the living. and that right. and uh, it's you may think that it that would never impact you but i can tell you firsthand you might be surprised at some of the things that happen in life where you absolutely need these plans in place absolutely and that said does someone need to see a lawyer to have these documents completed well um being loyal to my former profession, I would, my, my general answer is yes. And these should be done in the context of a comprehensive estate plan. That said, if someone says, I, I can't get out to see a lawyer, I can't afford a lawyer, I'm afraid to even walk out my front door, I've got comorbidities and a doctor told me not to go out my front door, can you do anything by yourself? Ironically, I think the medical power of attorney is closer to a do-it-yourselfer. Do you can probably especially if you're in Wisconsin or Illinois and you've got these um, very standardized formats you could use and they're hard to screw up. You, may, you need to have them properly witnessed and if your state requires a notary, make sure you follow all those requirements. The financial one's a little dicier because if you put seemingly innocent language in them, you can create some tax implications. So those you might want to be a little bit more careful about. Again, the, the bad, best answer is to have your lawyer look at things and do this in a comprehensive plan. If you're, if you're going in for surgery tomorrow and you need something, you can get a health care power of attorney, you know, again, in, in most states, off of um, a, a suggested statutory form off of the government website that you'll probably be able to, to muddle through and do just fine. Excellent. Thank you. So... Just, I guess, um, we're kind of bumping up against a break here. I hope that was helpful to help folks with those those three big fears, you know, running out of money, if uh, um, losing it because the government's going to confiscate it or I'm going to lose it or my creditors or the courts are going to get involved or my golden years are going to be turned into a not-so-golden years because of spending all my money on medical care. I hope at least we gave a few tips here to help. People. Absolutely. I think this will be very, very helpful for the listeners. Thank you so much for, for engaging in this interview. Well, I know it was a surprise. It was. And you I caught know. me off guard. Fortunately, I did this enough that I can, I can still talk to it these days. And you've got another interview here coming up momentarily. Hello again, everyone. You were just listening to a segment of the broadcast radio show, Life After the Box which originally aired on August 12, 2020. If you'd like to know more about the topic discussed in this segment, about how to protect your assets, whether you're worried about losing your assets due to lawsuits or some form of government action, or the government becoming involved in your life if you become incapacitated or pass away, or if you're worried about losing your assets due to long-term care and winding up in a substandard nursing home broke. If you're worried about these issues or others related to it, take a look in the description below this video where you will see a link to a course that will expand upon these issues and many more and give you a lot of valuable information and a lot of good education on how you can protect yourself, your family, and your assets by taking wise steps and planning in advance. Thanks so much for watching.